Hi guys, how's it going? Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the second video of the Redux series. In today's video, I'll take you through the three concepts discussed in the first video, which were the Redux store, reducer, and action. So if we head back to the Redux documentation, on the get started page, scroll all the way down, we'll import uh, create store from Redux and paste that in. And before we continue here, you'll see that if we run uh, this JavaScript file, uh, let me view my terminal. We have this error here that says uh, to load ES modules, we need the type module in our package.json. So just copy this and we'll add this to our package.json. And that should solve that. So now if I run and debug again, so we should be now seeing our results in our uh, console here. So I'll go ahead and close that. So back to the documentation. Before we can create a store, we'll need a function uh, called the reducer. So reducer is simply uh, logic that handles our state. So for example, this counter reducer that we see here, this is called whenever we need to like uh, update the counter uh, in this uh, application that they have here. So we have an action, and an action can be, for example, uh, if the count is being incremented, then the value of the counter, uh, we add one to it. If the count is being decremented, uh, then we minus one from the uh, counter state. So in our example, perhaps let's do a similar example. Let's uh, create a function called uh, which will be the counter reducer. And then here, what we need to pass as a variable is the default of our state. So the default will be uh, will be an object with the value zero. And then we'll also need to pass uh, another variable called action. Cool. So now what we'll do is run an if statement to check what the user would like to do to the state, whether they want to increment or decrement. So we'll say if action dot type equals increment, then we'll return an object, uh, which will be value but uh, the state in this case, or the value will be the current state dot value, which is this here, plus one, All right? Or if it's decrement, next up, let's create the store. So to create the store, we'll create a variable called store which will be create store and then we'll create the store using the counter reducer so now if i want to get the state of my counter what i'll need to do is call store dot get state then i can console log this just view my debug console so as you can see we haven't updated anything we haven't made any call here so the default state should be this value uh, with zero so if I click run oh. so we need a default uh, value so that will be our default if I just run it again okay there we go so as you can see uh, our default value is just value uh, uh, of which is zero so we haven't done anything. So you can actually export the state to any other file. So if I wanted to use this in maybe in a in my app.js file in React, I'll just go export default store, right? And then what should happen is that I can call uh, the store from any other file in my uh, React project. That means I can get the counter state in any file. 
And if I want to update this data, I can also do the same in any other file without having to pass it as a prop through several components. So to update the state, what we'll need to do is also call store dot dispatch. Let's just go back to the documentation. So it's store dot dispatch. Let's copy that line. So it's stored dot dispatch, and then you pass your type. So in this case, we have two types. We either incrementing or decrementing. So we'll just say increment. And then what should happen is that our counter state should be updated and should be one in this case. So let me run this again. As you can see, it's now one. And let's add another increment. So this will update our state to uh, a value of two. So if I just run that again, let me first view my terminal. Okay, and then run that. So as you can see, the value of two. So also what you can do is subscribe to your store and listen for any state change. So let me uh, say store. Dot subscribe so this will be a function then what we can do here is maybe uh, console dot log uh, let's get the value first of our state Okay, so what should happen here is that we've subscribed to our store. So that means for each and every uh, dispatch or uh, a dispatch, uh, what should happen is that uh, this console log should be executed. So every time there's an increment or decrement, it will give us uh, this console log here, which says value is and the value of the uh, current state. So let me run that. Okay, uh, so we just need that above this. So we need to subscribe before we dispatch anything. Okay, so as you can see, every time I call the dispatch, we have the uh, console here, which is value is one, value is two. So that means if you update your state in another page and you need to listen for the state in another page, for example, you need to execute a certain function when the state is updated elsewhere, you can just subscribe to the store and listen for the state. Okay, let's do a decrement. So obviously by default, the state is zero. So if we do a decrement, then it will uh, set it to negative one. So as you can see, value is negative one. Okay. So that's the basics of uh, creating a store and reducers. Now, obviously, when it comes to uh, React, I mean, yeah, React, you have more than one state. In this case, we've just created one state, which is the counter. And your application, most of the time, will have multiple states, so this won't really cut it. Now, what happens if you need to uh, listen or or pass several states uh, as a global state in your application. So to do that, we'll need what's called a combined reducer. So if I just search for it here, So this will allow us to combine several states or several reducers into one React uh, Redux store. So to do that, Let's just scroll and import this. So we'll import combined reducers. There we go. And then uh, I can have another reducer. Let's call it user reducer. 
and this reducer will handle the uh, user's uh, information or store the user's ID and stuff like that. So let's say state equals by default will we'll create an array, then action. Or maybe let's have it as an object as well. And then it will be user ID. By default, it will be now. Maybe let's just make it an empty string. Uh, username, also an empty string. Okay, uh, let's just leave it at that. And then, uh, so it will by default return the default state. And then for this reducer, we maybe will be doing uh, performing two actions, which will be setting the user ID and setting the username. So we'll say if action dot type equals set username, then we'll return user ID. So we're not doing anything to the user ID. So we'll keep the current uh, user ID, which will be state dot user ID. And then for the username in our action. So remember in the previous video, I mentioned that the action is actually a payload. So this will consist of the uh, of type and then we'll also pass along our username uh, in this payload. So we'll say action dot username okay so so now we have two reducers here which is our user reducer or counter reducer so to combine these into one store we'll first create another variable called root reducer and then in there we'll call combine reducer And then we'll pass in counter reducer and user reducer. And then when we create our store, we'll use the root reducer. Okay, now before we do anything, let's first console log how our state looks like or our store looks like. Oh, sorry. Uh, I just need to fix that. So it's supposed to be action. Okay. So let me run debug again. We have counter reducer and user reducer. So to get the user state, we'll just call user reducer. And then as you can see, we have user ID and username. So now if I want to uh, update the username, I'll call store dispatch and then now uh, I'll need type and then my type here set username so an example could be once the user has signed in I can set the username and then the username in this case would be uh, it will be action dot username, so it will be username. Let's call it test user, and then I can pass uh, this around on each and every page where I need the user information. So if I run debug now, as you can see, uh, the username is test user, and I can get the actual username by just uh, calling user name. Test user. So that's how you combine several states or several reducers into one store. And then this store is what you pass around to each and every uh, React page or React file that will need the uh, store. So in the next video, uh, what I will be covering is adding Redux to a React project. Thanks.